We've been talking about heat of reaction, the enthalpy of a reaction, and how that is calculated and always given in terms of the molar amounts in the balanced chemical equation. And so if we do something to the equation, say if we were to double the amount of methane that we burned, how would that affect the amount of energy that was given off? If you double the mass of, of stuff that you're burning, the output would be twice as much, right? That just kind of makes sense. And, and so we're going to look at some relationships involving this change in enthalpy or the heat of reaction. And they do have a basis in common sense. So here's an, ex, uh, an ex equation. Sorry carbon plus oxygen uh, to form carbon dioxide. And the heat of reaction for that is minus 393.5 kilojoules. That means 393.5 kilojoules are released for every one mole of carbon that is burned. Well, if we double the reaction, if we change the coefficients on the balanced chemical equation and put twos in front of everything, we have now doubled it, right? We're talking about two moles of carbon burning, then it's reasonable that the amount of energy released is twice that. So we have to multiply the heat of reaction. And the reason we're talking about this is because we're going to be messing around with some equations in a little bit. You can cut a reaction in half, you can multiply it by five, you can do different things to it. But when you do that, you also have to do the same thing to the heat. Does that make sense? If we reverse the reaction, flip it. So here was carbon plus oxygen forming carbon dioxide. Now I'm writing it backwards. Carbon dioxide is breaking into carbon and oxygen. Well, if burning the carbon released energy, then taking the carbon dioxide and, and taking it apart should require us to put energy into it. And it's the same amount of energy because of law of conservation of energy, you can't create or destroy energy. So if you do it one way, it releases this much, and if you do it the other way, it, you have to put that back in. Does that make sense? So if we reverse the reaction, we're switching the products and the reactants, then we just change the sign on delta H. How, how do you split it? How do you split it? Well, you have to put energy into it. Um, not necessarily heat. Um, I'm not familiar with this particular reaction, but I know with, but I know with water, um, with a spark in the presence of hydrogen and oxygen gases will form water spontaneously with the release of a tremendous amount of energy. I know that you can um, break water into hydrogen and oxygen by passing electric current through the water. You can do it even with a 9-volt battery in a, in a glass of tap water. So, but the amount of electrical energy that you're putting into that is equal to the amount of energy that was given off. Okay, yes? So when we do that, does that mean the surroundings would start getting cold? It, it would mean that the surroundings would get cold if this would be spontaneous. Okay. Um, and that, that's a whole other discussion. Right? Um, you can't just say, well, I want this to go backwards. It's like, you know, a train coming down a hill. Well, if it, well, maybe not a train. Think of um, a wagon or a bicycle, a bicycle. Okay, so you're riding a bike and you're just coasting and you're coasting down the hill, right? You didn't have to exert any energy because what's happening is you're transforming your potential energy into kinetic energy, right? So at the bottom of the hill, can you just decide, I want to go backwards up the hill? You're going to have to burn some calories, right? You're going to have to put some energy back in to make it go the other way. So there are spontaneous endothermic reactions. And they do so by absorbing energy from the surroundings, and that's like the instant cold packs, and then the surroundings get cold. But those are unusual. 
if a reaction can be expressed as a series of steps, then the heat of reaction for the overall reaction is the sum of the heats of reaction for each of the individual steps. So here we have um, our overall reaction. What is our overall reaction? Well, the step here would be A plus 2B going to C, and then C going to 2D. So this requires putting energy in, and then this releases energy. And overall, the energy change is the sum of those two things. It's a little bit like a change in elevation. Right? So if, if I'm going from here to here, what's the change in elevation? It's this distance right here. But that is equal to the sum of these two parts. I went up, I had to go up and over this lump here, and then I came down a little bit. The overall change is equal to the sum of the individual pieces. Any questions? Oh, and that's called Hess's Law. So here's an example of Hess's Law. Find the heat of reaction for this reaction. And we are given this information. So here are three other reactions where delta H is known. So to find delta H for this reaction, we have to figure out what combination of these reactions would add up to this. Chemical reactions on paper can be added and subtracted just like um, math equations can be added and subtracted. So the way I approach these things is I look at, well, what's my product? So here's NO, and so I want to have NO as a product. Here's NO, and there's NO. What we need to remember is that if needed, we can reverse these reactions. And then for our reactants, we have N2O and NO2. So I'm looking through these. This one has N NO2 in it. I know that that is uh, one of the reactants. Um, this one has N2O. So those are the only two places that those are found in these three reactions. So that's going to give me a clue what direction I need to write those in. So I'm going to maybe start with this one at the bottom because it's, I can write it in the correct direction or the same direction it is now. Oops, I forgot the positive sign, the plus sign in there. And then I want to write delta H over here. Because I didn't do anything to this, I don't have to do anything to delta H. So this had um, N2O as a reactant. This has N2O as a reactant. So this is OK. Now, I don't want N2 and O2 as products. So I'm going to want to add something in here that is going to have N2 and O2 as reactants so that they'll go away. And that would be this guy. So if I write this guy in here, I've got N2 plus O2 going to uh, 2 and O. And the delta H for that one is plus 182.6 kilojoules. <coughs> now, if I stopped there and added these two equations together, I have an oxygen as a reactant and an oxygen as a product. And so I can think of those as canceling out. And I have um, two nitrogens here and one nitrogen there. And so this, this one would cancel one of those. 
So now overall I've got 2N2O is going to N2 plus 2NO. So I'm getting closer now. I've got one of the reactants and I've got the product, although the amounts aren't right. Well, I need to get this other reactant in here somehow, this NO2. So that's going to be this reaction, but here NO2 is a product and I want it to be a reactant. So I'm going to write it backwards and then I'm going to change the sign of delta H. So 2NO2 going to 2NO plus O2. And then delta H, instead of being negative 113, it's going to be positive 113. And we typically write the signs um, here negative or positive just because um, it helps us to keep track of things. So if I add this equation in here, now I've got my NO2, uh, but I've got an O2 over here, and this O2 isn't being canceled because this one already got canceled by this one, right? So this is a little bit of a problem. Well, what if I multiplied this equation by 2? So I got another oxygen in there. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to wipe this out. And I'm going to take that equation and double it. So I've got 2N2 plus 2O2 forming 4NO. And then if I double that, I have to multiply delta H by 2. Well, I had canceled some things out here and then I erased some stuff. Um, this 2N2 will cancel with that 2N2. Because if we think about doing these reactions, when this reaction proceeds, two moles of N2 are formed. Then when the next reaction occurs, those two moles of N2 are used up. So they're not there anymore at the end. And up here I had one mole of O2, and down here in this other reaction as a product I have one mole of O2. That's a total of two moles, right? And now I've got two moles of O2 here. So those are going to cancel out. You okay with that? So then what do I have left? Well, I have two N2O, and I have two NO2. So those are both my reactants. And then over here, I've got four NOs and two NOs. And NO is supposed to be my product. So the amounts are off, but I can fix that later. So I'm going to add these together now. And I'm just going to copy down everything that I didn't cross out. So I've got two and two O. And I've got 2 and O2. All the N's and the O's and the 2's are confusing. And I've got a total of 6 no's over there. Question? Right. Yeah, we're going to have to divide this by 2. Then over here, I'm going to add these up, <coughs> keeping their, their signs. So I've got negative 163.2 plus 186.2 times 2 plus 113.1. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, it's correct on the screen, but yeah. Thank you. So let me go back and fix that on my calculator. It's 182.6. So 
So I'm getting 315.1. Know what you got? So delta H equals plus 315.1 kilojoules. So we need to divide it by two. When we look at this balanced chemical equation and this chemical equation, what we see is that this is a, a multiple of that. If we took this and multiplied by two, we would get this. So that means that this delta H is twice as big as the delta H for that. Yes? Equations? I added them um, sort of straight down. We, I didn't do a good job of lining up my equal signs, I mean my arrows. These are the equivalent of equal signs. And so anything that's before an arrow is going to occur before this arrow. So that's this one and this one. These two guys are after the arrow, they're products, and so that's why they're over here. Okay. Usually I try to line the arrows up and I forgot. And the delta H's, um, the positive and negative signs, they don't matter when adding them up? Well, you can add negative numbers. The question is, do the positive and negative signs matter when you're adding delta H's? Yes, they matter a great deal. I only say that because I noticed that delta H uh, is a negative one, three, six, one, three, three, and then Right. So delta H here is negative, but I flipped the equation. So I swapped reactants and products. I'm, I'm turning it backwards, and so then I have to change the sign on delta H. And so that's why this is a positive instead. And then when I add these, I do take into account the signs. And so I have a negative number, and I'm adding two positive numbers to it. Any other questions? So let's take that number we came up with and divide by 2. And that will give us delta H reaction. So that should be 157 um, point six kilojoules. Because this amount is specific to the molar amounts in the equation. That's a KJ at the end. Any questions?